So with the national season now upon us, all of the nationals around the world are starting to happen. I thought it would be fun to talk about ban list implications and what we could see potentially happen. So let's dive on into it, shall we? Smash the living crap out of that subscribe button so you can be part of the Ultra Ball Squad and we can get to 800 and eventually 1,000 subscribers. My ass needs a bit of a haircut. Anyway, let's go ahead and talk about ban list implications because at this point we know what the format is. We know that it's going to be branded Despia, Sword Soul, Punks because you know that's punk. Um... But yeah, let's just go ahead and dive into ban list implications here. These are just things that uh, I wouldn't mind see happening. I'm obviously not going to predict what Konami's going to do because they brought back fucking Yada Grasu and Time Seal, so what the fuck do I know? <laughs> Anyways, um, let's start off with the ban, Mystic Fucking Mine. This card should have been banned five years ago. This card is Degenerate AF. Any deck that can play a Mystic Mine engine, and when I say Mystic Mine engine, I'm saying three Mystic Mine with possibly... Well, actually, definitely three Demise Land and then possibly Metaverse and anything else. You know, you look at my 60 card branded Elder Lich deck, shameless plug. I know that I came at 27th place with that, the Boca Return Regional. Shout out to Prodigy Games. You should go and check that out on the channel. Um, it, I played three Demise of the Land, Metaverse, but then I also played Set Rotation. Now, a little spoiler alert, I did copy that build from uh, some European national or regional that happened in Europe because, you know, it's European. Um, and the guy was playing 60 cards and I copied his build and he was playing those cards. And it was absolutely insane. And it's insane in a lot of decks that can play Mystic Mind because you have Demise of the Land to get you to any field spell that you're playing, especially in a 60 card deck. It can get you to Mystic Mind. Uh, in my case, it was able to get me to Zombie World, Theater of the Branded, Mystic Mind. Like, I had options. And then you combine that with Set Rotation to get you to Mystic Mind then or to give it to the opponent. And then, like, then they have to basically play around their own and... It's it's just, it's so broken. It, it inherently pr creates bad gameplay in Yu-Gi-Oh. You know, the only reason why I could be Adagnister playing Branded Eldritch is with Mystic Mind and they don't draw on any back row outs. They're sitting with their big ass 6,000 attack Link 6 ready to beat me over the face with it. And I just go, Mystic Mind? And we just sit there and just get to stare at each other because I'm playing 60 cards and you're not, pimp. So I'm either going to mill you out or I'm going to wait till, the, till there's about 30 seconds left on the clock, not trying to stall, just drawing and passing, and bring out Golden Lord or like a Mirror Jade or some shit and just hit you for damage and then I win. <laughs> so Mystic Mind needs to go. My dad, the OG Jeff Leonard, has been playing Mystic Mind like crazy. Now he's finally going to Grimmaju, a different degenerate deck, but at least now he's getting away from that and going to... Grimmaju. So he doesn't want to see it get hit. It needs to be hit. Next up, we need to hit Halka Fibrax. Halka Fibrax needs to go, AK Needle Fiber. It can go needle itself a new butthole, whatever it is it needs to do. It needs to get the fuck out the game like five minutes ago. I, I can count, I think, on two hands how many fucking tuners we have lost because of Halky Needle Boy. Like, Glow Up Bulb got banned, if I remember correctly, because of Halky Fibrax. We lost O Lion. Uh, I mean, there's so many that I can't think off the top of my head, cards that have been hit because of Halky Fibrax coming into the TCG. And I think by banning that card would also in turn help Konami from at least what I feel like they're doing as of late. And they're trying to trim the fat on the forbidden section of the forbidden and limited list. So by banning Halky Fibrax, you can take Shooting Riser and put it at three. And then you can also bring back the tuners that Halky Fibrax was able to get. Because now that Halky Fibrax is gone, these cards could come back to one, two, or even three. And they would just see play in whatever kind of deck that they are able to see play in. It's not something that would really be overpowered. So you ban one card, but then you're able to unban like what? Five, six tuners or something. And then you put Shooting Riser back at three and like everybody's happy. So I, I do think that Halka Fibrax just, it needs to go. There isn't anything else I really think needs to be banned, at least that I'm thinking off the top of my head. Um, I think that are, there are going to be, or rather, I think that there should be some good amount of limits and semi-limits that need to happen. So moving into the limits, I have, of course, Rite of Aramiser and Water Enchantress. Um, what we saw in the OCG was that and the OCG tends to be more conservative from what I've seen over the years, that they put Rite of Aramiser and Water Enchantress from three to two and then move them to one. I think that Konami of TCG, I'm sure that they saw that and they said, fuck that, and they're just gonna put it to one. I feel that they're much more liberal when it comes to their hits in that regard. And especially too, with people being so tired of the Brave Engine, whether it's in Punk 
or based badass sexy engine as we call it in even Eldelich or even branded as we saw in some builds it's just it needs to go it's been out konami's made their money i think that they are going to hit Rider of Aramiser and water enchantress to one i do not know if they'll ban griffin rider because yes we have illegal knight but i think that that's going to come down to if they hit Rider of Aramiser and water enchantress to one will they still ban griffin rider and say here's illegal knight and basically eliminate the ability for any deck that can play the brave engine to have an omni negate and if they do hit the griffin rider then you can say okay they don't want every deck to have an omni negate that in of itself i think it, it is broken because it basically uh disables nibiru like as a card like nibiru can't even be played right now because of griffin rider and, and other decks that can make a monster negate at least by summon number four or even on that fifth summon and they establish the negate so that's going to be interesting to see, but I think Aramiser and, uh, or yes, Aramiser and Water Enchantress going to one, I think at the very least needs to happen. Um, also at one, I've got Alubar. Now you're probably saying, Avery, why the hell would you hit Alubar? Hear me out on this. Don't go and click subscribe or dislike. Hear your boy out first. Try to relax your anus. Um, Alubar is inherently, let, let's just call it for what it is. It's a fucking Stratos. Like that's, that's what it is. Now, you have Spriggan's Kit, and I'm sure y'all are going to be saying, Avery, you got Kit, hitting Alubar is pointless. But here's the thing with Kit. Yes, it does the same thing as Alubar, but you have to take a card from your hand and, like, what, put it on the bottom of your deck? That inherently gives Kit balanced card design because you're losing that extra resource. And we know in Yu-Gi-Oh, Yu-Gi-Oh is a resource game at the end of the day, period, end of discussion. You lose that one resource, that could potentially hurt you in your future plays. Now, unless it's something like a brick, like an Albaz, like, okay, fine. You're still losing that one card out of your hand. And to be forced to play those two or even three copies of Kit and then the one Alubar, then you lose those two copies, thus hurting your consistency. You gotta rely on the Kit and put a card on the bottom of your deck. And on top of that, you don't have as many Alubars engraved to bring back whenever a fusion monster leaves the field. And you may think, Avery, that's that's not very relevant. No, it's not always, but the fact that the deck has access to three copies of those, that it can just bring out and negate a monster and just have a chump blocker, it just, I feel like at three, it's just way too consistent. And what I also have on this list is putting brand diffusion to two because I feel like hitting it to one is far too heavy of a hit. I think hitting it to two and seeing what the deck does from there would probably be more the route that Konami would want to take to hurt the consistency. And then at that point, you're playing the two brand diffusion, got the aloe bar, so you're playing three. Plus, if you play three kit, then you're playing six copies of brand diffusion inherently uh, instead of three aloe bar and three brand diffusion, and then playing the six. Plus, I mean, obviously, they're not going to be playing Kit, but playing a potential nine copies, you limit the copies and limit the consistency of the deck. I also don't think that they're going to hit Mirror Jade in any way. I've seen some people saying it needs to go to one or to band. I think for the time being, I don't think that we're going to see Mirror Jade get hit unless Konami wants to take a heavier handed approach to branded after this next initial balance, which we'll see post Power of the Elements. So in about a month and change, we should see a new list come out. Um, but I feel like as of right now that they're just not going to touch Mirror Jade. Next up for the one section, I feel like this is going to be a bit more of a hot take. I think Masquerade is going to go to one. The ability for Branded to have access to three Masquerade and just basically lock the opponent out of however many plays. Yes, you can do that with one, but the opponent has to have much lower life to potentially get them to that point. You know, if you establish three Masquerade, which Branded Despia can very easily do depending on their hand and what they open up with, then you're paying 1800 per card activation. You know... The, uh, every deck right now in Yu-Gi-Oh goes through a shit ton of activations on their turn in order to break a board. You know, yeah, if you open up Dark Ruler or something, then you eliminate them. Yeah, if you open up Evenly, then you pay the 1800 but then you eliminate two copies. So there are outs to it, but I feel it's going to be a hot take. People are going to probably get pissed. I feel like Masquerade needs to be hit in some way. I feel like having it at three and being able to just very easily establish three is just way too much. Moving on to the semi-limits now, because off the top of my head, I can't think of anything else that needs to go to one. Uh, so at number two, or rather going to two, if I could talk today, uh, Branded Fusion, as I mentioned, to hurt the consistency of Branded. Uh, and then also, I think Allure, going from three to either 
two or to one would make a lot of sense because I remember back when Allure was originally at one and at two, it was because Konami was trying to hit the consistency of decks that played a lot of dark monsters. You know, having three copies of Allure, you could just draw two, banish, get an effect, draw two, draw two. Like you just had so much draw power. And we're seeing that now with the evolution of Branded. Playing three copies of Allure, you play the Allure, banish the Mercurier, get a plus. And really, it doesn't hurt them in any way to banish a dark monster. You know, if they've already got copies of Alubar in their hand, then they can just banish those extra copies and get more draws and all that fun stuff. Uh, we're also seeing this with other rogue decks that can play dark monsters like Grimmaju. And not that Grimmaju is really an issue, but it's something to keep in mind if Allure were to get hit. So I feel like it could either move to two or to one to hurt the consistency of those decks because Allure is just such a generically good, powerful draw card. It's been around since Phantom Darkness, like 2008, and it's not once per turn. So you've got three of them things. You're drawing six cards and banishing three. I mean, you can't tell me that that's not good. Also to two, I have Yadagorasu and Time Seal. I feel like Konami's gonna look at these cards and say, hey, no one's playing these cards. No one will ever play these cards. And I think that they're gonna be conservative with that and move Yada and Time Seal to two. And then after that, they'll probably move them to three just to you know get it on out the way. I don't really think anyone's ever gonna play those cards. Maybe Time Seal at three, because you can trap trick it. Maybe at two, because you can trap trick it. But I don't know. That just seems a bit booty, booty, butt cheeks to me. Like, why would you play that when you could be playing you know, the new Gravekeeper card that's coming out or Exchange of the Spirit, you know, with all the tier element shit coming out. For the three section, I do want to go out on a limb here and say that if Mystic Mind ends up getting banned, I think that Metaverse coming from one to three could very easily happen because I mean, it's a trap card. You got to set it. Like it's not the best thing in the world. Yeah, you can make the argument that when tier elements get you know, when they come out, I should say, not even when they get the uh, Shizu support, you know, they could play Metaverse, get their field spell, get a search, and then if they send something back to their deck for like a fusion play, then they have that pop interrupt. That is a possibility. Um, and it could potentially provide more consistency of Metaverses at three. But are you going to make that space for three copies of Metaverse when you could be playing, you know, other cards? Uh, especially when the, when the Shizu stuff comes out, and you're able to start milling cards out of the opponent's deck, I don't think that people are going to really be focusing on Metaverse too much. I could be wrong. I don't really think, other than that, anything will really go to three. I think the game is in a really good place with these hits, and I think really the game as a whole is very good right now, especially when you look at things like Power of the Elements and the potential that that set has to just make Splite tier zero, and then you have tier elements come in, and then you get the new Ishizu support, and it's it's just fucking bananas. So I do want to give a couple hot takes here near the end of this video. I think, uh, I almost said Fiber Jar. I can't talk today, I swear. Uh, Cyber Jar, I think, could come back to one. Because here's the thing, it's a flip effect monster, it's slow AF, and you mean to tell me that if I hit your face down monster with a mirror jade, you're gonna flip it up, pop my mirror jade, pop all the other monsters on the field, and you get out like let's say three or four monsters, I get out one, I use the effect of mirror jade, and then at the end phase you lose all your monsters anyway? If you're doing that, you're lower than even the booty booty butt cheek category of decks. Like, I just don't think it's gonna be that good. You know, empty jar hasn't been a thing for years. I think that cyber jar could very easily come back. So guys, please let me know what you think down in the comments. Are there things I'm missing? Like uh, I tried to put some notes here and I just started ranting as I was trying to film this and I just, I wanted to speak my mind and talk about what we could potentially see on the ban list. So guys, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.